What up, everybody? Scuffy here, and today we're not doing Shavrindar, um, but I've been playing around yesterday. Uh, I'm trying to remember what card it was that was in the shop. Um, turn the volume down because it's in my ears. Uh, there was a card, and I don't remember what it was. It start sparked my my mind to thinking uh, about the Blood Angels because we are about to get. The way this is going, oops, we're about to get Ascalon, Ascalon, uh, in probably, you know, five days and, and he's going to be added to the game. So I was taking a look at his ability as far as how to prepare for that, how to, how to do something with that. Uh, obviously I don't have Ascalon, so I don't have an Ascalon deck, but I have a preemptive deck that I actually think works, uh, both with him probably would still fine-tune a little bit more to kind of coincide with his ability. Um, but I did a little Ralderon deck, and I've been spending some time in practice with Ralderon uh, to pretty good success. Pretty, pretty pleased with it. Uh, Ralderon's been out, obviously, for we're going on month two and a half, I believe. Um, all total, maybe maybe three months now since the Blood Angels have actually released. Uh, and he's been out. He's your 35 hit point warlord. Um, he comes with a few cards. He comes with himself, which has got this ability, which was not his initial ability. It's been tweaked slightly. It's been improved. It's a little bit easier to pull off. Uh, deal one damage for one energy. If target dies, you get plus one, plus one to adjacent units. You get a little damage. You get a little buff at the same time. That's nice. Buffing is good. Um, as you can see here, that 2720, I think I think when I started practicing him, I already had like four or five just practice games in there, so that's more, eh, give or take. Give or take, most of these are with the new build that I was taking a look at um, with some tweaks as time went on. So it's never perfect. There, nothing ever sticks around for you know for, for the same day. What works today, you might not feel comfortable with tomorrow, but there are 80... God, 84 plus. Let's take a look. Let's do it. Let's do the let's do the math. Let's do the math, folks. Cards, change deck. Before we get into it, we've got we're gonna get one more added, and we have the con, which I do not have. So I'm down one warlord. So just consider as of Friday, we'll have two more in here. Uh, or consider two more on here. So we've got three plus one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen times six. It's eighty-four plus three, eighty-seven warlords. There are now eighty-seven warlords that are playable in the game, not counting event exclusive warlords. There's a lot to play with, there's a lot to practice with, there's a lot of versatility. So um why not branch out? Why not have fun? Test new stuff. If you're getting sick and tired of playing the same old thing, guess what? You don't have to. Pick yourself up a Warlord. Valderon is actually in the shop today. I'm hoping this video gets out there before the end of the day, but, you know, pick up Valderon. Um, so he's got that ability. He's got a little bit of damage. He's got a little bit of buff pump to him, right? He also comes with the, uh, all cards. He comes with the Archeon little 2e tactic which he did not come with initially that's not showing up here for some reason interesting hmm. well well what that is is it's kind of like some of the uh, the epic warlords have got that little purple card it costs energy gives them like a little clutch ability his is two energy and what it allows him to do is it lets him choose from one of three Blood Angel tactics. And they're randomly chosen. It displays three and allows him to choose one to add to his hand. So, in essence, uh, it's kind of like a clutch tactic that you could use. You might get a Ravenance. You might get a Bane of Demons. You could get Imperium Secundus. Any of these tactics here within the faction, you're going to see. And you're going to have the option to choose from. So depending on your matchup, depending on how the game is going, you could take a look and say, hey, yeah, I want a Blade in Carmine. Or, you know what, I'll take a second Crimson Spectre. 
or a spear of, of Telesto, whatever it is, whatever it is that you're seeing that might apply. For instance, if you're facing off against a mono warlord such as an Angron, uh, maybe a Jack Tycon, Spear of Telestos might not be what you're wanting. Instead, what you might want is either the Crimson Spectre or a Host of Angels, or even just a good old-fashioned direct damage shock assault, whatever it is. This allows for some versatility. So, that's very nice. Um, what I aim to do with the deck, well, let's go into it. Let's take a look at the deck here, and I'll show you what the deck looks like. Or should I show you the yeah, we'll show you what the deck looks like and then we'll do game plan. I'm trying to remember what steps we want to do this in because some of these things need to make sense. So, first off, as you can see here, there's a bit of a difference in the cost of this deck. We've got seven 7 plus energy cards. We've got 11 tactics. We've got 19 troops. However, the tactic selection here on the deck, what I was thinking, and this is my thought process, is Host of Angels is a very big swing. At that point in the gameplay, for the Blood Angels faction as a whole, uh, seven energy plus is when they can really put down the pressure when they can either do the host of angels multiple uh, drop pot troops with landing or they can play out the big baddie guys to either counter their opponent deal damage whatever the case may be so the tactics that i've chosen have doubled down on that because i'm basically putting in the war room which is going to draw me a tactic reduce its cost by two supply lines which is going to draw me vehicles reducing its cost by two and those are my Venerable Jophile and my Cloten Dreadnought. And then we've also got Abandoned Supplies, reducing cost by two. I've got a, I had in here a uh, uh, Command Bridge. I might actually put the Command Bridge back in in place of one of those War Rooms, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, while there are other tactics in here, for instance, Crimson Spectre, it's not one <laughs> plotting on our D&D &D, uh, game coming up here on Wednesday uh, Prophecy Revealed those, I'm on the fence about to be honest with you they, 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 they kind of uh, take away from the effectiveness of War Room but at the same time so does Abandoned Supplies and Supply Lines so it's kind of a catch-22 now you could argue, eh, just double down with Asteroid Sanctuary yes, yes you could but really, all you're doing is upping your energy. You're not reducing your cost of a specific card that you want to do. I want a specific card. I want to draw cards, most importantly. Asteroid Sanctuary with Ralderon, there's no card exchange. Uh, and that's one of the things with the Blood Angels, as you find, is that you're drawing cards. You can peter out if you're not drawing carefully or you don't have enough cards in hand. But if you're practically drawing or you're drawing specifically things that you want, then you are getting what you need for later on in the road. And then at that point in time, you can hold on to those in hand and gain whatever it is that you're drawing normally. You don't need a Lecticio, you don't need a Void Engagement or any such draw cards. So there's that. Then the idea is through either Abandoned Supplies or War Room, you're able to play Host of Angels at 5 energy. Playing that card at 5 energy is a good play. It's a very strong play. It's not a guaranteed play by any means at all because at that point your opponent can still play defensive satellites, artillery strike, they can have flankers, whatever the case may be. But it puts down three bodies on the board that your opponent has to respond to. If they don't respond to them, they're going to suffer penalties. Even if they do respond to them, they can still suffer penalties through the course of cards like Angel's Tears or even Malaris, not Malaris, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Harem Squad which you might think, why is Harem Squad in there? Harem Squad is a cheaper Angel's Tears in a pinch. It's necessary. If I get these guys at zero because of an Abandoned Supplies, that's great. If I get Angel's Tears for three because of Abandoned Supplies, even better. Regardless of the point is, their Requiem is a very powerful combination trigger when you play Coast, Host of Angels. Uh, that's This isn't a new strategy with the Blood Angels. I mean, it's evolved as time has gone on, and we've seen how they work a little bit more following some revisions to their faction. Um, however, it is a good play. Now, to go with that, once the Angel's Tears is down, you can drop your, uh, you know, drop the squads that come with Host of Angels, which are three times potentially Clonatus. So you can get two Clonatus with Requiem Triggers from Angel's Tears. And depending on what your energy got, has in, in your hand, you can follow that up with Drakius, 
as well as the goldstone hunters. And those ones I took in a little consideration and gradually weaned down. Initially, my tactic pool, I think, was like at 15, 15, 12, and 18, and I've scaled it down to 11 and 19. And again, I could probably tweak it just a pinch and get 10 and 20, but I think this is about right. Now, you might say, why no Telesto Spear? Why no Blade and Carmine? Um, for this specific type of win con build, I found that Blade and Carmine detracted a little bit with its speed. At 5 energy, I want to be able to play my Host of Angels. Um, so playing Blade and Carmine, while nice, is not as effective. It can come handy in a pinch, and if it comes up from Archeon, I'll take it as an option, but it's not something I'm building on specifically. Uh, Telesto Spear, again, same kind of thing. While its cost reduction can be effective, and you can use that to destroy troops, if it's not, or you're playing against a troopless deck, uh, it's going to hurt you. But also, if your opponent has troops out that you can throw your troops against and trigger Requiem, that's okay too. Destroying a troop and then not being able to trigger Requiem kind of is self-defeating. So, let's see, what other cards do I got in there that just kind of, you know, draw some heat? Jubak is always just a nice little draw heat card. Not necessarily requiring for pumping, but if I can pump out with Meditus, uh, Harem Squad, uh, Malaris, just using the abilities in a pinch from uh, Ralderon can be very effective. But the key cards really are the Host of Angels and the cost reduction cards. Um, and Mortat never really comes in. I very, rare, very rarely have actually used his landing ability. I used it a lot more prior to the change that they made to the Judgment of Angels, which I liked that card prior to how they changed it. Um, Cloden Dreadnought, following the change, is actually really good. While you gain Cleave 2 on the landing, you might not get the landing, you still get the Bloodthirst, and a Bloodthirsty 5 8 Dreadnought is not to be overlooked. That's potentially 10 damage right there, whether that's to a face or to troops, regardless of whatever it is. And if you're going to lose him on the same time that you're doing your, your, your 10 damage, you drop a harem next to him and you're doing more damage. So just a great play. If you can get Cloden off at 6, Venerable off at 7, Host off at 5, and you could very well do it following proper turn play proper uh the right kind of drawing of the cards with war room supply lines it's very possible your opponent can respond to one they might respond to two it's going to be very hard for them to respond to three plus four plus heavy heavy threats and then everything else in between you're just kind of chewing them up so i've got some games pinned here and uh really quick just i was doing some shabran dar yesterday for my dailies i thought that was nice I thought there was some nice kills, especially after playing Ralderon all day, um, and then going up against two Ralderons, it's kind of like, eh, I, I, I know what you're trying to do. Um, maybe not necessarily the way I'm doing it, but just the, the general concept, of here's what here's the cards that you're going to need, I know what to do. Uh, Ornitov was for a daily challenge for the drop 80 cards, uh, 8E, not 80. Um, okay, so we've got some pinned... These are just like resigns. We're kind of boring. This Theal one was a very good game to show. Because uh, Theal's going to have some key troops that they're going to play at certain points in the game. As well as, you know, just some smart tactics. So, we're going to go through here. And we're going to kind of just speed this up a smidge. The first, the thing with this deck, the one downside to it, is, uh, let's see, I'll go with Spirit Telesto because... I know he's going to have Ancient Marcellus or uh, uh, Stellak, whatever he's going to have late game. I want to have the answer for that. Um, early on in this in this game with this deck specifically, you're going to be kind of not necessarily behind, but you're going to be suffering to some degree because you're going to be playing those tactics that are drawing you things for the end turn. So you do have to have a couple cards like Malaris. Meditus, um, just to draw heat, just a smidge, just a smidge of heat um, from your opponent away from Ralderon. Otherwise, you're going to take more damage than you want, and it's going to be harder for you to come back from. It's not impossible, just harder. So 
uh, what I've got here, now this is at this point, this is a Blood Angel with a bunch of cards in their hand. Now, granted, I had Jubak in there, um, but I'll take it, you know. Uh, we've got um, we've got our Venerable Jophile coming in at 7. And then War Room, I could pull that again. I think with the 6 energy, what am I going to go with? I'm going to go with there, and I'm going to do the old pump. And this is just where... The um, the one energy cost from his ability. I, I forgot I was stunned when I when I played him down. So I was like, okay, well I'll give up my flanker then. You know, sucks, but whatever. Um, but his ability have that one e. You can drop a couple troops, cheaper troops, and pump them both, or prop prop a little bit bigger and just for that one energy squeeze it out, and manage to to uh, really really hammer them out. Yeah. Um, and then at seven energy here this next turn, I'm gonna drop to file and pump him. Now, against Theo specifically in this game, I'm playing to give myself a little bit of room with a troop on the board, hopefully, so that he simply can't straight up counter with Stellock. Right? So instead, I'm gonna go with this host of angels. Because while he might get courage, he's not gonna be able to destroy any big beefy thing. And I'm okay with that. I'm willing to take that. Um, and while he's got, you know couple of my guys answered for he certainly doesn't have all my guys answered for and that allows me to put down a few more bodies uh which is going to help and i held on to that spirit telesto as you saw so that i could properly gain the requiem i've got a zero cost i'm still holding on to it but i've got it so that i can deal some wicked damage and again here he's fishing i can tell he's fishing for whether it's mccrags or Stellak, or Marcellus. Um, that's usually what you fish for. And I've got the Old Angels of Tears. I've got the Clonatus. I've got my Drakeus, which right here we're gonna we're just gonna double down. Oh, that's kind of funky how that's popping up. Okay, well, uh, and then Angels of Tears just combos so well with those fast units or even the flank units. Uh, between them either attacking troops or attacking warlords he can just pile on damage I mean, just like that we turned a three attack into a six damage we turned a two attack into five damage so just a solid card and that's a way to put pressure out there now even if he had destroyed one of my guys with a courage troop or stellak i still had plenty of answers in my hand um and let me go into this branton deck this game kind of went a little bit this is another good example of just a troop versus troop picking the right cards and play order now eh, getting host of angels in my hand kind of bites you know i'd like to get it at five but we do what we do and i think this game here was one where i definitely felt the the uh pressure where did i go with did i go with judgment I think I went with Judgment in the event that I get a landing troop so I could use that flanking because I know as Branton, he's going to have troops on board. So I could have gone Crimson Spectre. Definitely not a bad choice. Definitely not a bad choice, but I think I went with that for that reason to kind of turn the tides a little bit. And you have some flexibility with that Archean. You really can uh, decide based off of what's in your hand at the time when you play it. Sometimes playing it first turn is kind of your go-ahead, but if you've got abandoned supplies, you may want to play that first um, to get through the cards in your deck faster and then play the Archeon after you've got another one or two cards in your hand because you might be like, ah, yeah, do I need do I need two, two Crimson Spectres? The answer is usually yes, but in the event that you don't, um, go for it. Uh, and then right there, we can get a little bit of pump action. We're taking some damage here, you might think. You're like, ah, yeah, that's that's gnarly. But we've got plenty of bodies to put out on the field. So I'm not terribly... So, as I was saying, um, in this instance here, I'm putting troops on the board to try to throw off some of the pressure from my warlord. Because he's up pretty significantly from where I'm at. Um, however... Uh, you know that's the point that's the idea that's the whole the whole focus on that is to to put down bodies that he eventually is going to run advanced for now he's got forge complex here branton it's going to be a long game it's going to be doubly complicated because of branton's uh 
reckoning ability or whispers ability his 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 dreadnought in tournament because then he can just straight destroying my big beefy guys so i've really got to properly combo um things out and he's got a nice Ertzy there probably can't tell if that was pulled from the uh from the forge complex or not but pretty powerful uh, we're gonna throw down some angel's tears here to really heat things up and that severian is nice um because it's protected right so i can't hit it i can't damage it however that does make things nice right there and i can then buff uh a goldstone as well as my angels so my angels is immune to melgator um and then he's got to respond in kind i've got the crimson specter he's got them just out of specter range and unfortunately judgment of angels isn't going to work against his flank troops or his his stealth troops so as much as i would have loved to put down cloten and Judgment of Angels, it um, with their stealth, I can't. So it's just a matter of just smart, careful plays here. And the pressure's on, but I'm okay with what I'm about to do. Because I'm going to heal myself quite a bit. I'm going to drop him down quite a bit. And then I'm going to just keep the pressure up. I've got more bodies. He can put down a big, beefy... Be big beefy boy um but it's not going to be enough I and mean, you've got the bane of angels in hand or bane of demons rather uh that's just kind of the pinch damage um i could have put down cloden and judgment of angels it um and then and then cleaved for five uh as as well so that's an option in there um and then i think i mean i do i have time for one more I'm trying to get these all in here today uh, as best as I possibly can. Yeah, I think I do. I think I've got this against the Perturabo. This is a... I think this is a true Perturabo is what he was going for. And obviously I want to toss the, the big expensive guys. Unfortunately, it's one of the risks is you might get some big expensive stuff back. But again, that's okay if you're cheapening other things. Shock Assault's going to be handy. Either to get rid of a front, front line, his 4 health front line troop. Um, or for any of his, uh, um, like his, his Taranthicos vets, I can play that. I think I'm going to play it right here, though, because I don't want him spawning a bunch of dudes. And right now we're just kind of going tit for tat, and that's okay. I'm putting some pressure down. He's going to have to respond to that. That is one thing that the Mortad is good for. The Mortad is good for forcing response from your opponent. Right? Now, here we go. We've got a 6 dread. Um, he can throw out some damage. That's okay. It's going to hurt. It draws some heat, draws some fire. It takes basically three cards to kill this one. Uh, negating anything else that he can do this turn. He can't put down any more bodies. He can't retain that pressure from Perturabo's ability. It's going to allow me to play Host of Angels and set myself up. And again, Host of Angels, not always effective at gaining their landing. That's fine. I don't need them to. I don't want them to. The point is, I want them on the board. I want them to put pressure on my opponent. And here's something that he does here that I think... I think he was going for a win con. Uh, he was feeling really comfortable with himself with what he's got here. He double, double uh, decimates, which isn't bad. Um, and you're going to see some nice and some big beefy troops here. Uh, but really what that does is that doesn't do anything for his board. He wastes a lot of energy there. Um, and then that's going to allow me to do some fun stuff. Put some pressure on his warlord who still doesn't have his ability activated so he can't respond directly to these troops all he can do is kind of break a landing and golg is up there golg is beefy and nasty don't get me wrong he's 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 a force to be reckoned with and i've got my Jophile as well to answer him he could have as as an iron warrior he could have ancient horrend as it was a possibility uh, but that's some serious damage put out there. And right now, we're looking pretty safe, pretty solid. Uh, I feel good about it. Now, why did I go there, you might ask? Well, because I 
figured that was the best way to see which way that three damage was going to go. And I feel comfortable, and I'm willing to take the 10 to my face. It's a big, beefy gold. I took it. It may not be the only one. But again, here he's down to three cards. One of those is his Whisper. And I am pushing everything he has to just really put the pressure on. And I can take 15. All total, I've taken 15 of my own choosing to deal out the damage. And it, he's, he's either tapped out of answers, run out of answers, uh, trying to prep, go for something. And that's about what he can do. And that's going to allow me time to put down some more bodies. Uh, it was a good game. It was a very tight game. I don't think, you know, you just keep that pressure up. It's once they fall behind or once they have limp, reduced their options as far as being able to respond to you, um, that's kind of it. That's all you got. And then we're going to go ahead and bitter end it. And I can Crimson Spectre here pretty comfortably and feel okay about it. I think that's the way I ended up ending this game was with the Crimson Spectre. Yeah. Ba boom. Like one of those little sound boxes from like 1992. Um, I, I hate I hated the siren on it. Like the machine gun was cool, the bomb, but the little siren noise was annoying as fuck. All right, so that's Raldron. That's Raldron. That's what I'm going for with this deck. You can. And here's the thing. You can play Rolderon so many different ways. This is a very flexible deck. I've got Landing and I've got Requiem. You could go all Landing. You could go all Requiem. You could go Buff Pumps. You could go Direct Damage. Absolutely. Um, but what I'm aiming for specifically with this build is those high-end, high-value return troops played time after time after time. Ideally, two turns before they should be played. Getting off one, anytime you play uh, uh, like an Ornithops Barge, a Pride of the Emperor, anytime you play a big high cost card for two energy less, you feel great. This deck allows you, technically, depending on how your draws go, you could play six of those cards and feel great. That's almost all of my seven plus energy cards at two at less energy. If I'm getting Host of Angels at five energy, not only do I get to play it at five, but at a ten energy point in the game I could technically play host of angels as well as one or two other cheap cards depending on what I've got in my hand so it really lends itself well with flexibility again you take some punishment early on and against super aggressive decks uh, Karn being able to attack twice as a world leaders can be very vicious I, I faced several Angrons I beat Angron Angron was not too worried about it because at some point eventually he has to he runs out of answers for my troops and he's going for his conqueror but these cards can be drawn and beat conqueror one or two turns ahead of it and that gives a huge advantage um but karn can put out a lot of pressure pretty fast uh pretty early in the game and usually by six energy you're kind of in the way state so at that point playing some of those tactics are, is kind of it's hard to come from behind uh but the rest of your troops works pretty steadily so that's it that's Ralderon. that's my Ralderon take as it is currently as it stands there's uh, different ways to play it again there's so many warlords to play in the game there's so many cards in the game don't feel like you have to play everything a specific way don't get locked in host of angels is a very nice card uh, it's a rare it's not it's not epic it's not legendary it, you can have two of them you can i th think i think they're in the shop are they in the shop? Oh, they were in the shop yesterday. Ugh, sorry, guys. I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm on yesterday's time. Today it's White Scar's day. Uh, so, no. <laughs> Ralderon's not in the shop, nor is Host of Angels. But I believe both were in the shop yesterday. So, gosh, I've time-traveled to the future to when my mind was going to do this video to when I actually did the video, and here we are. Um, but... You can play him 
several different ways. There's certainly not just one perfect way to play it. I think he's a very flexible warlord, which I think is a very shining example of a good way to go about doing a warlord. Blood Angels were not strong on release. They had a lot of flaws that have been smoothed out uh, and, and, and refurbished as time has gone on these last two months. Um, and each Maros, Ralderon, and Sanguinius right now play very differently. And I believe the build that I've got could very feasibly be tweaked to be just as powerful under Azkalon. I'm kind of looking forward to trying that out when he comes out. Um, so that's it. So if you liked the video, if you liked the deck, if you liked the idea, uh, give it a try. Test it out. Also, um, you know, like, subscribe. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so or check in for notifications. I put up videos all the time. Self-plugging, blah, 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 obligatory YouTube video. Check things out. I'm not going to go into massive detail there because you hear it all the time. And I think I've talked long enough, but I'm really just trying to flush things out. And I hope this was good for you. I hope this is beneficial for you. If you were on the fence about how to play Blood Angels or you want to dive into a different Warlord, uh, I urge you to go ahead and do it and have fun with the game. That's the whole point. There's so many things, so many cards, decks, options don't feel locked in to any which one to way to play. They're very easy to play. I'm um, playing in practice, but I'm playing in Terra level. Um, so this is, you know, these these practice players are all at Terra level. Just practice, just having fun. Doesn't matter. Play in the game. That's the point. That's what matters. So that's it for me, guys. Until next time, keep playing Legions, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.